In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating my favorite pregnancy exercises to naturally promote or induce labor at home. My name is Dancy Pinkston, also known as Fearless Mama, and I'm super excited about this video because I have carefully collected these pregnancy exercises from top birth experts in the world, including spinning babies and miles circuit to promote labor or naturally induce labor at home. I personally began doing these exercises in late pregnancy to prepare my body for birth, to create extra room for the baby, and also for them to settle in the most optimal birthing position. I usually do each exercise for about three minutes to 30 minutes each. Just kind of what I was feeling that day, what um, time I had that day, and what I felt comfortable doing. So with that being said, let's get started on this video. So the first exercise is awesome. Um, immediate hip pain relief <laughs> for me personally. So what you do is you wanna get feet spread apart parallel to each other, bend forward at the waist, sinking back into the stretch. Make sure to engage your abdominal muscles. Inhale and lift your right hand over your head. Follow it as a guide to guard you from twisting too far. Exhale and place your hand back down. Another thing that about this exercise, it's super important to let your tailbone swing out, making sure that it is untucked, which absolutely suits those pregnancy aches and pains of the lower back and hip. Next is the psoas release. Yes, so as release, that's a new word for me too. What you wanna do is engage your abdominal muscles to stack the torso over your pelvis, rest one hand on something if you need it as you draw your shoulders down away from your ears. Make sure to sink in your sits bones, those bony bones in your booty, and make sure to keep your lumbar spine very tall and long. Relieving this deep pelvic muscle can unravel a torqued and tensed lower back as it is connected to the front of your hip all the way to three points of your sacrum. Another great releasing exercise is the modified open knee to chest. Place your forearms and knees on the bed and knees about hip width apart. Then aligning shoulders up over your elbows, rest your head on your arms. So your spine and your thighs will make an upside down V and this angle will create room in the lower uterus with the natural pull of gravity. And this stretch specifically may help your baby get into a deeper head down position by stretching out and untwisting those lower uterine ligaments that may be tight and torqued from poor posture. Okay, so another set of exercises is what I call engage. So we talked about releasing exercises. Now these are kind of more focusing on engagement. And this one is called the Malaysian squat, Malasono squat, Mideastern squat. There's different names. It improves digestion for one thing to make room for baby, get them deeper into the pelvis. So what you wanna do is start with your feet a little shoulder length apart and toes turned out just slightly. You can hold on some to something to make sure that you don't fall down. I realize you are big and pregnant and this is definitely an advanced squat. So make sure to hold on to something like the edge of your bed. So when you get down into this position, you can place your hands together and slightly press on your knees with your elbows. Your feet can be flat on the ground or your heels can be up a little bit. You can support them with a towel or something sturdy like a rolled up mat. But the most important part about this is to extend your lower back, making sure that the tailbone is untucked. This lengthens the pelvic floor and allows it to stretch and open up, opening those hips, opening the groin, just loosening that tightness that has developed by sitting in cars or sitting poorly on the couch, things like that. 
So another great one is circles on the exercise ball. Make sure that your baby is in the most optimal birthing position already, facing anterior. Then you can start get doing these circles on the exercise ball, which will help get baby's head deeper into your pelvis pressing on that cervix and therefore hopefully bring on contractions. So Spinning Babies gave the tip to turn on some salsa music and do circles to that speed while periodically changing directions for about 20 minutes. Next is the exercise ball lunge. I loved this one. Um, you can also do this one on the coffee table by lunging with one foot on the coffee table and one foot placed down. But the key here is to make sure that you have a 90 degree angle with your hip to your knee to your ankle. These are super great if you know your baby's head station is around zero or near it. Super great to do even during labor. This motion rocks open that mid pelvis making the most narrow part of your hip outlet open so baby can descend down so what you want to do is place your foot flat on the ground to one side then rock gently towards your knee making sure to not go past your toes and then move back to center again. It's best if you do this during contraction. Like I said, this is a great one to do during labor. And what people normally do is about five to six with a contraction with each leg. Lastly, but not least, this is so important. It doesn't seem important, but resting smart is key in your last weeks of pregnancy. Excuse me, my daughter is playing over there and making noises. <laughs> Um, so in my last week of pregnancy, so ball sitting, my last week of pregnancy, I was super anal about sitting properly with great posture on my exercise ball. I did not ever sit on the couch ever again. If I did, I laid on my side to watch like a movie or something. Um, but while I was eating, um, I just sat on my exercise ball, brought it up to the table, and to make sure I was keeping good posture, resting smart. So why would we want to do this? You want to be sitting upright to provide a hammock for your baby, which encourages that baby to settle down deep into the pelvis, um, making sure that they stay in that anterior birthing position because that is typically what sets you up for a fast and easier birth. And when the mother's ligaments and fascia are balanced, then you're good to go because we don't want anything blocking the way of the descending baby. So what you wanna do is sit so that your feet are flat apart so that your feet and the center of the ball may a tripod. The ball should be firm and big enough so that your hips are equal and higher than your knees. Last but not least is hammock resting. I cannot express enough how important it is to rest smart. What this means is making sure that your belly button is pointing to the ground or at least horizontal parallel with the floor. I like to think of it your belly button as a flashlight and if I am plopped back on the couch that is tucking your pelvis where your baby cannot engage and get lower into the pelvis and potentially squashing their room and making them feel like they need to change positions. So hammock resting takes pressure off your back while working with gravity to allow baby to rest in your belly like a hammock. What you want to do is sit on your knees and just a little about hip width apart to allow your belly to hang in between your legs. Then rest your chest and arms onto the ball, making sure that your tailbone is untucked and gently rock from right to left, making sure your pelvis is nice and loose and fluid. Another great thing to think about is hammock laying while you are sleeping for the night, making sure your belly button is pointed down by laying on your side. Um, with your hips just a little bit forward. Make sure to bolster with lots of pillows, taking any pressure off your belly. You can learn more about that on the Spinning Babies website and just look up hammock laying or resting smart. So those are my favorite late pregnancy exercises to do to promote labor and do labor at home setting yourself up for a fast and easier birth. But it is best to work on pelvic balance throughout your entire pregnancy. Before getting to your last week and trying to work on rotation and engagement and all of that good stuff, 
um, it's best to just prevent it all and make sure you keep good posture and balance with great pregnancy stretching exercises throughout your entire pregnancy. And you can check out those videos in the description box to make sure you are all set and ready to go. They're not only just great for balancing, but relieving pregnancy pain symptoms. It's always a good idea to consult your healthcare provider before starting any exercise program. Your doctor may have certain restrictions for you when you're expecting, especially if you are at risk for preterm labor, placenta previa, high blood pressure, or were prescribed bed rest. Well, that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.